Hey y'all, Scott here, and EW! Always keep a frying pan handy, you never know when a 7 out of 10 game is gonna strike, because obviously all those games are hot trash. I personally only play the highest quality games there are, so let's take a look at the greatest games of all time, according to Metacritic. Yes, today we'll be looking at all the games with a 97 or above on Metacritic and seeing if they either hold up today or at the very least deserve to be on the list. Just a reminder, Metacritic's highest scoring games list doesn't include games before the N64 era, so sadly, older games aren't included here. Hey, I didn't make the list. Also, this is more of a first impressions on these games, not a comprehensive review. Basically, do I like what I played and do I think it deserves to be rated so highly? Thank God this made the list. I was gonna go into my emergency Scott's pissed kit if NFL 2K1 didn't get some representation. I don't own this game, but if it ain't mad in 08, I ain't having it. Perfect Dark was a spiritual successor to GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64, one of the most groundbreaking games of all time due to popularizing first-person shooters on a home console, both in terms of single-player and multiplayer. Since Nintendo lacked the James Bond license at the turn of the millennium, Rare decided to make their own original IP based on the foundation they created with the original GoldenEye. So let's check it out, Jesus Christ, I have to use this thing. Pardon me, it's just difficult to go back to shooters on the N64 these days due to the lack of two analog sticks. The game actually allows you to use two controllers at the same time to get dual sticks, but I don't actually have two controllers, or even the expansion pack needed to play Perfect Dark, so... Let's look at the Xbox Live Arcade version of the game. It's basically an enhanced port. It's the same game, but with better textures, models, etc. But nobody dared to touch the animations and voice work, they had to be preserved. And then I spent 30 minutes wandering around the first level not knowing what to do. The mission objective is to just gain entrance to the laboratory. Sounds simple enough, but to me, these levels feel like a maze. Environmental assets are reused throughout the entire level and doors blend into the rest of the walls which add up to not knowing where I am or where to go. Based on the level of difficulty you choose, you have different objectives to complete, which is actually a cool concept. If you're a better agent, you'd obviously have more to do than usual. But that leads to more confusion, like I think I'm going in the right direction, but lo and behold, there's a section here that's only useful on higher difficulties and I have to find the direction to go for my difficulty. Playing this game feels like walking around in complete darkness. No idea where I am, where to go, and waving my arms around helplessly trying to proceed. I still think this game is super impressive by N64 standards though. Shoving graphics of this caliber and all these voices on a Nintendo 64 cartridge is pretty stellar and the multiplayer is definitely where the fun lies. But first impressions on the campaign were frustrating. What used to be groundbreaking now feels really dated and headache inducing to me personally. Halo followed by everybody's favorite subtitle, Combat Evolved. And dude, for a launch title in 2001 for the original Xbox, this thing is crazy! Halo back in the day was commended for having a top of the line story, great single player, and sublime multiplayer. Top that with the fact the Xbox launched with it, and no wonder this game is on the list. Nowadays, it's a good game, albeit graphically dated. Your ship gets attacked and you have to escape, all while doing the whole not dying thing. Security! No! Sam! Sam! Thank God this game gives you incentive to eliminate the enemy. This game's alright nowadays, it's definitely aged in a few aspects, but overall, it's still a good game. I like this way more than Perfect Dark, I will say that for a fact. Graphically, for 2001, it looks pretty good, but these days I feel like these character models are supposed to be telling me what my fortune is at some rundown arcade. Overall, quite the amazing launch title at the time, and the epitome of a system seller. No, pretty good game. Grand Theft Auto 3 was one of the most groundbreaking games when it was released. Oh god, why am I playing this on the 360? You see, Xbox games are backwards compatible with the Xbox 360, and hopefully you notice that asterisk because problems vary from game to game. GTA 3 apparently has an echo effect on the graphics. Great. Anyways, this was the first 3D entry in the Grand Theft Auto franchise, which was at the time top-down only. Of course, being able to murder policemen in 3D led to controversy, which no doubt led to greater sales. And yeah, it's Grand Theft Auto. This is the blueprint for the rest of the series, definitely way more basic than newer entries though. But sometimes, simpler is better. Not here, I'd take Vice City or San Andreas over 3 any day, but it still does have its charm. It's still an open world sandbox, and the fun lies within going crazy and doing whatever. At least for me, GTA has always been a do whatever, I don't care kind of game. I'd rather play other entries in the franchise, but 3 was a monumentous step not only for the series, but gaming in general. Does it hold up well? I'd say so, the only thing that feels specifically dated is the presentation, both graphics and sound. Other than that, it's still Grand Theft Auto, and it plays well. 
so I've never fully gotten into a Metroid game, probably because when I actually had money to spend on games, no new Metroid games were coming out. But I still have a few titles from the series past, so let's finally see if I can get into a Metroid game with Metroid Prime, the first 3D game in the franchise. After a long hiatus, the Metroid franchise made its triumphant return with this game. At the time, the game generated controversy from fans because Metroid in first person? How could it be? We're playing the version included on the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii, and this game is amazing! It's just so good, you start off all powered up, exploring, having a great time, and after you defeat the Parasite Queen, Meta Ridley attacks, and your suit gets downgraded. You're completely weak, but that gives you incentive to continue on to regain your abilities. This game just plays so fluidly, and it's so much fun to control and explore your surroundings. It's impressive for a GameCube game too. Yeah, this is a re-release on the Wii, but the GameCube original is not far off at all. This is a must play, honestly. Everybody find a copy of Metroid Prime and give it a shot. You won't be disappointed. I don't actually have Pro Skater 3. I have so many others, but not three. What unfortunate. Next up is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that I obviously hate. Hey, I went on for seven minutes on why it isn't perfect. If I say anything good about the game, I'd obviously be a giant hypocrite. To that I say, that wasn't me guys, I swear my YouTube channel was hacked. Now that I'm able to say some good things, this game is phenomenal! It does to the open world genre what Ocarina of Time did to 3D adventure games and what the original Zelda did to 2D adventure games. This world is filled to the brim with secrets. Every time you discover something, it feels like you discovered it. You did that yourself. It feels like a legitimate adventure. Hyrule is such a fantastic area to just explore, roam around, screw around, it's amazing. The puzzles, both in the shrines and the divine beasts, are awesome. They also invoke a sense of singular discovery due to how many ways a puzzle can be solved. The art style is wonderful, the soundtrack is completely subdued, but when it gets going, oh boy, it gets going. Breath of the Wild is absolutely fantastic, it deserves to be on this list hard. Of course it does have some problems here and there, but those are just minor annoyances and an experience that is worth everybody's time. Grand Theft Auto V, one of the most popular games of all time, and rightfully so because this is a fantastic Grand Theft Auto game. It's so fun and beautiful, it took the fun-filled nature from the old GTAs and the abundance of activities to do from the newer ones and mashed them together into the lovely murder-filled rampage it was always meant to be. This is actually the first Grand Theft Auto game I fully beat. I usually just get bored playing the standard game and just popped in GTA to screw around, but with Grand Theft Auto V, I actually liked playing through the story and on top of that, screwing around was a hoot and a half. This is fantastic. This and Breath of the Wild are the cream of the crop when it comes to open world games. Let's just say I have plans to cover this game in the near future, but for the time being, Super Mario Galaxy is one of the greatest games of all time and holds every right to be on this list. It takes the 3D Mario formula and does something completely new with it while retaining the feel of 3D Mario. Really, everything a new entry in a classic franchise should do. It's also Mario in space, I was sold at the very beginning. It's so great, I'm debating nailing the shirt I bought the game into the wall. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is often considered one of the greatest sequels of all time, and considering it's the sequel to my favorite game of all time should inspire me to beat it. Nope, Galaxy 2 is basically just more of Galaxy. Imagine if Galaxy received an expansion that was the size of a new game. Personally, I prefer Galaxy's heavier emphasis on story. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, by that I mean, it was a perfect Mario story. It was the same damn thing as the last 40 games, but it put a new spin on things and gave everything an epic feeling. Galaxy 2 throws away everything and acts as a sort of retelling of the original, now with more straightforward levels. Now I'd say this is fine, either you prefer Galaxy 1 with its larger level designs and more epic feel, or you prefer Galaxy 2 with its more linear classic Mario style level designs with a more just get right to it feel. But regardless, if you like one, you're gonna find enjoyment in the other. Soul Calibur, one of the definitive fighting games of the late 90s. This is the Xbox Live Arcade version, and on top of that, the free trial, because you can't spell I'm too cheap to buy the full version just for this episode, so I'll just play the free trial without free trial. And wow, this game is actually pretty great. It's really fun, even for a novice player such as myself. It's pretty simple to pick up and play, and it's just straight up fun. I wouldn't say an absolutely amazing experience nowadays, but a really fun fighting game. This is truly a game that pro players and casual players can both enjoy, and that's something I think the fighting game scene needs more of. Really? This did better than Grand Theft Auto V? Well, Grand Theft Auto IV was huge when it released. The first GTA in high definition on much more powerful consoles, taking on a darker tone. Of course this was one of the biggest games of all time, I don't like this one that much. Alright, get this. GTA IV is a decent romp of a sandbox game. I mean, it has everything you'd want out of a GTA game at the time. But there's a few things that just ruin it for me. The world feels a bit empty to me. All I really remember from this game was the city setting with barely any buildings I could actually enter. It felt kind of like a city full of billboards and nothing but. It just ends up feeling more like an HD 
version of GTA 3, and at least in GTA 3 it had fun with itself, like running over people in that game sounds like you're going to town on some tomatoes. With GTA 5, it's so colorful and pleasing to look at, with loads of variety within its visuals. GTA 4 comes from a time in which every game was trying to nail the smearing the Mona Lisa in the mud look. Brown and gray. As a colorblind citizen, thank you, but I prefer GTA 5's more colorful style. And may I introduce the worst aspect of GTA 4? The driving. The cars are so stiff. It's gross. These cars should handle like they did in previous games, or 5, or if you want a more broad way of putting it, like an arcade racer, these controls feel stiff like a simulation racer. If you like simulation racing games, cool! But GTA works so much better with smoother, less realistic controls. Do you really want GTA to feel realistic or fun? And spoilers, there is a correct answer. I feel like GTA 4 did so well because it was that generation's GTA for a while. I played a ton of it, but only because it was the only Grand Theft Auto on the 360 at the time. Definitely far from my favorite. You know, I've always heard great things about the Tony Hawk games, but never gave them a try. I may not have Pro Skater 3, but I do own Pro Skater 2, so let's give it a shot. This is the version released on the original Xbox, Pro Skater 2X. It's mainly a port of that game plus levels from the first Pro Skater with a few aspects taken from Pro Skater 3. And my god is this game fun! It's a skateboarding game that's a mix between an arcade game and a collectathon. You skate around doing tricks, which leads to getting more points. You can also explore the stage and find certain collectibles or complete certain tasks. Doing these tasks and earning points leads to getting more money which can be spent on new tricks and also unlock new stages. This is such a fun game, no wonder people ate this stuff up back in the day. One of the best games of all time though? Uh, here's the thing, this game is great fun, but I haven't played enough of it to truly see the greatest game of all time hiding within it. I see a really fun game, but I think that's pushing it a bit. However, it's way better than some of the other games on this list, so I'll say it deserves to be here. Score-wise though, I'd personally put it in the lower 90s from what I played. Unanimously considered the greatest game of all time, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is the beloved, groundbreaking, definitive entry in the long-lasting Zelda franchise. That's alright. Is it good? Yeah, it's Ocarina of Time, of course it's good. In fact, I'll go a step further and say it's great. Now, I feel like other games have surpassed it in terms of overall quality, but when you look at the long list of games released over time, it simply makes sense for Ocarina of Time to be widely considered the best of them all. It took the game countless lauded as perfect and did a classic Super Mario 64 to it, won 3D on us, and captured the hearts and minds of millions. I've stated before, I love the Zelda franchise, I just don't play a lot of the games. I love so many things about all of these games, they're just hard for me to totally invest my time in. They're not the easiest games to pick up where you left off if you stopped playing like a month ago. And yeah, I haven't beaten Ocarina, but I plan on fixing that one of these days, and I can say this is an expertly crafted game. Also, check my dough out, this is completely improbable. Man, what a waterfall of quality. Who knew video games could be so good? Yeah, I'm so happy right now. I think I'm gonna take my new thesaurus on a test drive and see what the internet for good is just for funsies. I have to look at the worst games of all time next. I'm fucked.